Hey guys, Austin here, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the top 10 worst moves that I believe the Oilers have made since drafting Connor McDavid. Connor is in his ninth season with the team, and he has yet to make a Stanley Cup Finals appearance. It is not every day that you luck into a generational talent, and it is obvious the front office in Edmonton has taken his time here for granted. Every positive move that is made, about three or four terrible boneheaded decisions follow. There are 10 specific boneheaded moves that I want to talk about. So, with that intro out of the way, I'd like to go over the top 10 worst decisions made by the front office since the Oilers drafted McDavid. Get ready, because there are some real doozies in here. But first, if you end up enjoying this top 10, make sure to hit the like button to show your support, and maybe even hit subscribe if you really like it. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10, trading Sam Gagne, Kyle Brodziak, a conditional fourth round pick, and two second round picks to the Detroit Red Wings for Andreas Athanasiu and Mike Green. Ken Holland was in his first full season with the Oilers, and he was trying to give the team a trade deadline bump, but this trade is just awful. It was technically two separate trades, but they happened on the same day, so I combined it into one. Nobody could have foreseen the effects that the pandemic would later have on the league and the bubble hockey that we got, but Mike Green played just two games for the Oilers, and Athanasiu played just nine games, uh, plus four regular season games where he scored exactly zero goals and had zero assists in those playoffs. I think Edmonton would have been better off holding on to Gagne and the two second rounders, in my opinion. This trade also kickstarted the fan backlash, where Ken Holland became gun shy on making a big splash the next season, where he said, You can't go for it every year. Brutal. Number nine, signing Zach Cassian to a four year contract at $3.2 million per season. Zach Cassian was in the middle of a shooting heater after getting some ice time with Connor McDavid, and Ken Holland pulled the trigger on signing him to a multi year contract. By the end of the 1920 season, he had scored 15 goals. In the next two seasons with Edmonton, he scored a combined eight goals in 85 games, and he had to be paired with several draft picks just to be shipped off to Arizona to clear cap space. The Oilers would have benefited greatly from spending that cap space on an actual scoring winger for McDavid. Number 8, the Duncan Keith trade. In the summer of 2021, Ken Holland shipped a young and developing Caleb Jones to the Chicago Blackhawks for 38-year-old multi-Stanley Cup champion defenseman Duncan Keith. He still had two years left on his contract with a cap hit of $5.5 million per season. Now, surely, at that age, the Oilers would have made Chicago retain half of Keith's ca uh, salary cap for the next two seasons, right? No? Well, okay, the Oilers could take on Duncan Keith's full salary, but, you know, Chicago's going to have to sweeten the deal to make it worth it for the Oilers. Uh, Chicago's going to have to throw in a draft pick or two, right? Wait, no, that didn't happen either? What the hell? Ken Holland, explain yourself. Oh, do you want me to get him for free? Now, Duncan Keith wasn't as bad as many fans had worried he would be at his age, but gambling on that type of player at that kit, cap hit was playing with fire. Edmonton is lucky Duncan Keith retired with one year left on his contract. The Oilers were supposed to get an additional $3.4 million in bonus cap space relief on top of the $5.5 million off of the books from him retiring, but for some reason, Bill Daly and the NHL vetoed it or something. I don't really know how it all went down. Um, that is beyond my pay grade. But on to number seven. Number seven, drafting Philip Broberg with the eighth overall selection in the 2019 NHL entry draft. The 2019 draft still stings to this day for many Oilers fans, a draft that was loaded with high-end forwards, which the Oilers desperately needed not only for the main roster, but to develop for their dwindling prospect pools in the minors as well. There are players like Trevor Zegris, Matthew Boldy, and Cole Caulfield still on the board, but Ken Holland walked up to the draft stage and announced Philip Broberg's name. Philip Broberg was ranked anywhere from 10th to 40th on many draft rankings, and he definitely was not worth a top 10 selection. Plus, defensemen generally take longer to develop, so he would have been of no help to the team for at least two to three seasons minimum. But as it would turn out, he wouldn't even be ready to help the team out even in the 2023-2024 season either, as earlier this year he was sent to the AHL. He has not been able to find his game for Edmonton, and at this point, he might just be considered a bust. If I'm the Oilers, I would try and package him in a deal to improve the team right now before his value hits rock bottom. Number 6. 
Jordan Eberle for Ryan Strome. This is a trade that still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The only reason I think Peter Chiarelli traded Jordan Eberle is because in the 2017 playoffs, there was a clip showing him avoid throwing a hit in the corner against Anaheim, and then Edmonton Media ran with the narrative that he was too soft for the playoffs and he needed to go. It did not help that Jordan Eberle scored zero goals in the playoffs, but that was more bad luck than actual player talent. Trading Jordan Eberle had major ramifications that the team is still dealing with today. Like still not having a true number one scoring right winger to play with Connor McDavid, for example. Ryan Strom hit a career low shooting percentage while playing with the Oilers before Chirelli ended up trading him at his lowest possible value for Ryan Spooner. And the rest of that trade tree is history. I'm not going to get into it. What a waste. Number five, signing Milan Lucic to a six-year, $42 million contract on July 1st, 2016. Milan Lucic in his prime was a 30-goal scoring true power forward who could fight and whose game was suited to the late 2000s and early 2010s NHL. But by the time he became an unrestricted free agent in the summer of 2016, there were signs that his game was slowing down and that his play style was not suited to the faster-paced game that teams were building. His first year at Edmonton was fine. He scored 23 goals and he put up 50 points, which were all within his career norms. But by year two, his game had fallen off a cliff faster than most people could even predict. Everyone knew that the back half of that contract was ugly, but there was hope that if Edmonton could win at least one Stanley Cup in the first three or four years of this deal, that it would still be worth it. It turns out by the time Lucic was traded after just his third season with Edmonton to Calgary for James Neal in 2019, the Oilers would only win one playoff round with Luch, and he wouldn't even come close to hitting 50 points again. In fact, his 23-goal season in 2016-17 would be the last time that Milan Lucic would score more than 10 goals in a season, period. Absolutely brutal. Number four, 9.25 million per season for Darnell Nurse. Now we're into the part of the video where fans are going to start to become divided. The Darnell Nurse contract has created an endless wave of memes and discourse and vitriol on social media, as well as creating an unofficial media versus fans type social media war when it comes to Euler player evaluation. Now, I am not here to fan the flames of an already touchy subject, but I will explain why I have the nurse contract at number four on this list. I like Darnell Nurse. I think he is a good but not great defenseman. The reason this contract by Ken Holland is here is because of the salary cap repercussions it has had on his ability to find affordable and serviceable depth for the blue line and up front with this team. Before Peter Chiarelli was canned, he had Nurse sign a bridge deal. Nurse obviously lived up to the relatively small cap hit of $3.2 million per year that he was given by Chiarelli, and then Ken Holland took over. Well, Ken Holland decided to bridge Darnell Nurse a second time because the team did not have the cap space available to give him a long-term contract at the reported asking price of about $7 million per season. Now, why did the Oilers not have the cap space available to sign Nurse long-term? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because Ken Holland earlier that year gave Zach Cassian $3.2 million per season and Alex Chase on $2.1 million when he probably should have just let them walk. Not signing at least Zach Cassian would have allowed Holland to sign Nurse for around seven or seven and a half million dollars per year long term. Death by a thousand cuts. Of course, we all know what happened next. After putting up an unsustainable shooting percentage in the North Division in the 2020 2021 season, Ken Holland just could not wait for the second year of the bridge deal to play out, and he gave Nurse his massive eight year, $74 million contract. Just horrible asset management. But somehow, there are three worst moves the Oilers have made since Connor was drafted. Number three, the Jack Campbell contract. Duncan Keith retiring in the summer of 2022 gave Ken Holland over $5 million of cap space to play with to address their need of a starting goaltender after Mike Smith had to retire due to injury concerns. Some of the goalies on the market included Darcy Kemper, Philly Huso, Casey DeSmith, Scott Wedgwood, Martin Jones, and Jack Campbell. Before free agency even officially opened, it was widely reported that the Oilers were going to be signing Jack Campbell. Campbell was coming off an up-and-down year with the Toronto Maple Leafs, where he was named an NHL All-Star, but he struggled to maintain his game in the second half of the 2021-22 season. It was also the first year he had ever been made the number one starter for any time in his career up to that point. 
If the Oilers had given Jack Campbell a one-year show-me deal at $5 million, I would have been able to stomach signing him. However, Ken Holland did what Ken Holland does best, overpay for an asset that he has no idea how to properly evaluate. He gave Jack Campbell a five-year, $25 million deal. He put up abysmal numbers in his first season in Edmonton, and he only lasted a few weeks into his second season before being sent down to the AHL's Bakersfield Condors, where, as of this video, is currently still playing. Goalies can be voodoo when it comes to long-term commitments, but Ken Holland just cannot help himself, can he? This, shi this signing should have got him fired. Number two, a first and second round draft pick for Griffin Reinhardt. After selecting Connor McDavid with the first overall selection in the 2015 NHL entry draft, the team was poised to build a strong prospect pool by also holding the 16th and 33rd overall picks in that same draft. Peter Chiarelli had just been hired by the Oilers and was looking to make his mark by getting some much needed help on defense for the 2015-16 season. His mark would end up scarring Oilers fans for life as he dealt both the 16th and 33rd overall picks to the New York Islanders for young defenseman Griffin Reinhardt. To add salt to the wound, the 16th overall selection would go on to be used to select Matthew Barzal. Reinhardt would end up playing a grand total of 29 regular season games for the Oilers, while Matthew Barzal is continuing to have a strong career with the Isles. You can never have too many good forwards on your team, and if you're the Oilers, you're apparently allergic to stockpiling talented players in general. And somehow, this was not even the worst trade Peter Torelli was responsible for, and this leads us into the number one worst move made in the Connor McDavid era. But first, here are some honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one, Ryan Strom for Ryan Spooner. Honorable mention number two, Bridging Evan Bouchard. Honorable mention number three, signing Miko Koskinen to a three-year contract at $4.5 million per season after a 15-game heater. Honorable mention number four, Chris Russell getting four times four on his contract. Honorable mention number five, trading Drake Kajula for Brandon Manning. You know, the guy that injured McDavid in his rookie season. Honorable mention number six, signing Andre Sekera to a six-year $33 million contract. Honorable mention number seven, Bob Nicholson blaming Tobias Reeder for the team's struggles. And honorable mention number eight, firing Jay Woodcroft despite him having the best coaching winning percentage in team history. All right, guys, with the honorable mentions out of the way, it's time for the number one worst move Edmonton has made since drafting Connor McDavid. It was one for one. Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. There is not much more than I can say in this video about this specific trade that has not already been said. The Oilers dealt Taylor Hall to improve on the back end and free up cap space to sign Milan Lucic. Taylor Hall would go on to win the Hart Trophy with the New Jersey Devils, and the Oilers would go on to mismanage their assets so badly that even though Adam Larson was a fine and serviceable defenseman for Edmonton, he could not make up for the talent that was lost in dealing Hall, and the team could not figure out how to find value scoring wingers to replace Hall's production. This is by far one of the worst trades in Oilers history, and June 30th, 2016 will forever live in infamy in oil country. Number one times two. Wait, did you think I was done after number one? Oh, no, 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 no. Keep watching because there is a actual tie for number one. The Oilers as an organization were gifted the best player the sport has ever seen. And we can look at all of these signings and trades and we can all get riled up and angry. But the real anger has to be directed at four people in particular. Daryl Katz putting Bob Nicholson in charge after the 2015 draft lottery created a ripple effect and the true number one worst move made in the McDavid era in Edmonton is the hiring of Peter Chiarelli and Ken Holland back to back as general manager. I cannot think of two general managers around the entire NHL since 2015 that have managed to run a team worse than both Peter Chiarelli and Ken Holland have with the Oilers. Peter Chiarelli's most pressing needs when he was hired in 2015 were to find a true number one netminder, a true number one line scoring winger, and a number one defenseman. Ken Holland's most pressing needs when he was hired in 2019 were finding a true number one goalie, a number one line scoring winger for McDavid, and a number one defenseman. The needs of this team have not changed since Connor McDavid was drafted in 2015. McDavid is in his ninth season, and the Oilers still need a goalie, a defenseman, and a scoring winger. 
It is unfathomable. It is inconceivable. It is impossible. I have absolutely no words. The fact that this team even made a conference final should be a testament to the play of Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. These two players almost single-handedly willed this team to a championship in spite of the GMs putting the roster together. Daryl Katz and the entire Oilers organization should be embarrassed. If things do not improve quickly, I would not blame McDavid or Dreisaitl for walking as free agents in two and three years from now, respectively. Get your shit together, Edmonton. What a joke.